Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about the Geochron. It's been uh, just over four months since I did my first in-depth review of the Geochron Atlas 4K device, and uh, still going strong, and I'm still really, really enjoying this. There are a few minor software updates. Uh, noteworthy, but uh, not, nothing too, uh, you know, wild. <laughs> as you can see, the main display looks about the same as it did. I've added a whole lot of custom pins or little cities, little markers on the map. And uh, oh, I've, I've left the the International Space Station tracking active on there. But I've, I've basically everything else, I've tried to keep it looking a lot like the mechanical Geochron at this point. In my initial review, I mentioned that the menus render a little bit differently depending on whether you're using an HD or a 4K monitor. They've done some work to make sure it's a little bit more consistent along the line. So as I press this, this is me pressing the, the power button. And when I do, this is the power menu that comes up. So you've got some options there. The, they're the same options. They just look more consistent uh, whether you're using you know, an HD or a 4K monitor. As you can see, you can sleep the device, uh, check for updates, do a full factory reset, clear the settings. Also, you'd do a full device shutdown or restart or just reloading the Geochron software. Or you can send debug logs all from this power menu. So if I press the return key on the remote, it takes me back to the regular display. From here, if I press the menu key, it takes me to some of the more familiar menus that, uh, that were always there. This first general tab, pretty much looks exactly like it has for the last several months already. No major changes there. And of course, if I scroll to the right, again, this menu pretty much looks the same as it always has. This one here, uh, the next one is the pins tab. So uh, this one has changed. Now, in my initial review, I said that, uh, you know, you had a limited number of pins you could add to the map. And I thought it was uh, somewhere around maybe 15, depending on which kind of monitor you were using, because uh, you couldn't really see beyond that. But now they've made it more clear. If you look at the upper right portion of the screen here, it does tell you that you have uh, 50 available pins. And at this point, I've already got 41 active. But uh, there it will definitely show you, you can do up to 50. And it also has an easier way to scroll down to see the different pins that you've created. As I use the down arrow on the remote, you can see that it's affecting the little, uh, on the right side, kind of that little, you know, scrolling line there, that bar down there. And as I'm going down, it's taking me down to see, you know, all of these different custom pins that I've created. Now let's just focus in on one. <laughs> this one would be, you know, Quito, Ecuador. So I manually put in the latitude and longitude for Quito, and I manually put in the name of Quito. And then over here on the right there, I can select whether or not I want the time, the local time for Quito to uh, appear on the map, or if I just want the city name that I've input. And uh, then, you know, you've got a little trash icon there if you want to delete that particular pin that you've made. Now over here, just above uh, the name of the pin I've created, there's a little, little, little dot. And this allows you to change the color of the text for that pin. So here I've highlighted the name Quito, but if I then go up, then, uh, you know, I've highlighted that, that little button there. And if I keep pushing uh, the OK button on my remote. Uh, it doesn't really do anything to the to the little dot right there. However, if I go over and look at the, the name that I put on the map, here you can see that each time I push, uh, push the OK button, it changes the color of the text for Quito on the map. So you've got that option available on any of these custom pins that you've created. Also, something I don't think I explored in my initial review, down here again by the name Quito, there's that little icon with the four arrows. So if I select that and I press OK on my remote, then this allows me to use the arrows on the remote to uh, just fine tune the position of Quito on the map. So if somehow I don't feel like uh, when I input the actual latitude and longitude that it showed up exactly where I thought it should be on the map, see if I just kind of scroll here, I can move Quito out into the ocean or I can move it back, uh, you know, the other direction or up and down. So that's a, a way that I can fine tune the position of any of these pins that's different from maybe changing these numbers manually. You know, I can just kind of you know, eyeball it with the, with the arrow keys if I want to. 
The next tab on my configuration menu would be the Live tab. And this is where they've added just a little bit since the last time I did my initial review. So down here on the bottom of this list, there's the ISS, and I can open up uh, some, some options by pressing on the down arrow key there. Uh, that's exactly as it was before. Uh, the Hubble Space Telescope shows up the same way. Uh, they've, they've made the ability to fine tune how you see satellites. So if I go in here and select, uh, let's see, you know, say the last 30 days of launches, I can actually open up that and see individual satellites in a list. And as I see those, I can decide if I want to show each one of those individually or not. So that's kind of a nice way instead of, you know, sometimes the satellites got a little overwhelming because there were so many of them that could be displayed all at once. And uh, now you can just kind of pick and choose a little more easily uh, if you're, you know, really, really wanted to see some sort of specific satellite. The weather option remains about the same as it was when I first got started here. So you can, you know, display any of those, uh, you know, weather stats and graphics on the map. And then something they've just recently added, COVID-19 confirmed cases. So if I open this up, I have the option of showing a legend or not. And then I also can choose the opacity of this layer. So let me go over here and activate the COVID-19 confirmed cases layer. And now you can see how those show up with circles on the map. Now, if I go in here and I activate the legend on this as well, let's show that legend really quick. Uh, let's see here. Okay, show the legend. And then you see a bar up on the upper right side of the map, basically showing what you might expect uh, as you get from yellow into the deeper red color. That would indicate more cases uh, in that particular part of the world. And then here I've activated the grayscale mode, so it's a little bit easier even now to see where some of the hotspots are, if you will, for COVID-19 right now. Inside each of those circles, if the circle is large enough, there may be a number also printed on screen of the number of confirmed cases. There you can see, for example, South Africa has you know quite a large number of cases. Brazil, also one of the uh, you know larger case numbers in the world at this time. And here you can see in the United States, uh, there are a lot of smaller dots all around because maybe this looks like it's maybe taking, uh, you know, maybe some, some numbers from different counties all, all across the nation instead of, you know, kind of one big lump for uh, any particular state or the entire country. So anyway, it's, it's, I, you know, I hate to talk about it too much, but it is actually very interesting to be able to see this visually on a map and get a, a little bit of an idea of, of how this pandemic is um, shaping up at the moment. So again, most of the things that I've already explained in some of my other videos, including my in-depth review, those remain the same, but these are just some of the, the minor updates that are out there right now. And, uh, you know, there are actually some more updates in the works since this is software that can be updated from time to time. I know the folks there at Geocron are interested in, uh, you know, adding some neat little details as they can. And so I'll be looking forward to that. And as it becomes even more noteworthy, I'll make some more videos. But for now, man, I am still so, so happy with this uh, Geocron device. Uh, I, I used it in the family room and the kids love it so much. They, 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 <laughs> they really won't allow me to take it back to my office anymore. So I, I may just have to get another one. But it's also really encouraging to see how much the kids are learning about geography and about astronomy. And uh, they have a really good understanding of the fact that, you know, when it's the middle of the day here at home in some other part of the world at any given time, it's sunrise or it's sundown or it's the middle of the night or, you know, it's, it's fun for them and, it's, and fun for me to see them start to uh, understand those concepts. And they, and they really do get it from looking at a Geocron. So anyway, that's just a little fun for you and for me. And uh, well, I will invite you please to join me coming up soon in more episodes of The Good Timekeeping Show.